Hi friends, you have heard about a familiar word that's Pashtuns, sometimes spelled as Pakhtuns or Pathans. These are the group of uh, astral people belong to the Eastern Iranian ethnic group, mainly residing in Northwest Pakistan, parts of South and East Afghanistan, and a huge diaspora all across the world and especially in the South Asia that has been evolved down the centuries. They used to speak a language that's Pashto language and also belong to a Eastern Iranian branch of an Iranian language family. As we know that they were divided into innumerable number of the tribes and the clans with varieties of the origin theories. Some of the very popular theories like a descent from a Pakhtas or ancient Pakhtians to the later theories of a post-Islamic era or a Mughal era that claims to be a Semitic origin descended from a legendary figure known as Qais bin Abdul Rashid. So today we are going to review the distribution of Pashtu population, their historical background and correlate it with the modern genetic findings, especially why paternal haplogroups and how they are going to fit according to the distribution of their Y paternal haplogroups and these theories of origin are going to fit with the modern genetic history free or not. So let's take a quick look on the different theories of the origin that has been proposed down the centuries by different ethnic experts and historians. So one of the theory that gained attention from the ancient days is regarding the use of the word Pakhtas that has been referred in Sanskrit sources and the same word Pactians in the Greek sources and has been said these tribes were living across the eastern frontier of Achaemenid Empire. Then the second theory came up, the people, they are descended from Sakas, a group of a nomadic Eastern Iranian people who historically inhabited the Eurasian steppes and Tari Basin. Then another theory that claims that they are descended from Ahiftalites, an ancient Iranian nomadic confederation that inhabited Central Asia in the, during late antiquity. Last but not the least is a descent from a Greek admixed Rajputs and recalling that they have been a connection between uh, Indians and the Greeks and uh, this happens after or during the campaigns of Alexander the Great. Now after that, a much later theory was proposed during the time of a Mughal Empire where Pashtu folklores were compiled in the books and they have they had been claiming their descendants from the Israelites, an ancient Semitic speaking group who inhabited Canaan during the Iron Age and they were considered themselves as one of the 10 lost tribes of Bani Israel. So this legendary theory of Bani Israel goes back to a legendary person known as Qais bin Abdul Rashid, a Islamic era figure during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or like a Rashidun Caliphate seems to be a fast Pashtun or a father of the modern Pashtun. It's like a legendary or a myth propagated at the time of the Mughal emperors by a local religious figure known as Mullah Nematullah Harawi. Mullah Nematullah Al Harawi was a chronicler at the court of a Mughal emperor Jahangir where he compiled a Persian history of Afghans by the title known as Maghzani Afghani. In that book, he completed his theory of Qais bin Abdul Rashid, where Qais bin Abdul Rashid is claimed to be a part, a descendant from a line or a lineage of a legendary traditional Bani Israel tree, going back connecting to David and Solomon in the old days, and finally going back to Abraham. In this theory, the Qais went to Medina with 40 of his companions. He accepted the Islam and married with the daughter of Khalid bin Walid, and therefore, uh, he came back and settled in the part of the region of modern Afghanistan and this is how the Pashto tribe was born. Let's quickly dip into the genetic history or what we like to say that genetic perspective from the point of Y haplogroup. A study titled Genealogical Study of Origin of Pashtuns was published in 2030 and it studied enough number of Pashto subjects 718 and it found that R1A was around 61.6%, L31.6%, J26.7%. Interesting point to note that none of them were tested positive for a subclades of a J1 that has been presumed to be an Abrahamic Y haplogroup that seems to be considered as a signature mark among the descendants of Prophet Aishak or Prophet Ismail. The Adnani Arabs take their name from Adnan. And looking back through the stories in the Quran and in the Torah, Adnan was the son of Ishmael. And Ishmael was the son of Abraham, the oldest son of Abraham. And Ishmael is generally considered by the Quran to be the founder of the, the Arab tribes. Now, coming back to another very interesting historical perspective from a study 
titled Afghanistan from Y chromosome perspective. This study was published in European Journal of Human Genetics in 2012. The study gave a wonderful perspective regarding the origin of the Pashtuns. The study said that we demonstrate the genetic similarities between the Pathans from Afghanistan and Pakistan and both of them are characterized by the predominance of haplogroup R1A1A. Again, that's the same Indo-European or a Eurasian or Indo-Aryan haplogroup that is quite commonly present among the populations of South Asia, also among the Europeans and shared a common ancestry long before from the steppes of Central Asia and Europe. Also, this further said that high frequencies of R1A1A and the presence of G2C M377 chromosomes in Pathan might represent a phylogenetic signals from Khazars. This seems to be a common link that give a connection between Pathans and some Eskenazi group Jews, while a absence of E1B, a lineage that is quite common in among the Greeks, does not support their roots of Greek ancestry. Now another review study titled Geographic Origin of Ethnic Groups in Alien Subcontinent Exploring Ancient Footprints with Y-DNA Haplogroup by David G. Mihal and Lanis G. Matsukas that was published as an original research article in Frontier Genetics 23 January 2018 concluded some interesting findings and this study include the 50 tribes of South Asia including India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and the one of the biggest sample around 238 is from the Pashtu or the Pathan samples from Northwest Frontiers. This study concluded that every ethnic group in the data sets has a members that belong to one or more than one haplogroup and that indicates multiple line of ancestry and geographical origins. And it seems that with the time, people from the different sources or people from the different backgrounds used to conglomerate and form our tribes and with the effect of endogamy, the tribes were born or built up down the centuries, especially the endogamous practices that has been practiced in South Asia from a long time, especially after the arrival of Indo-European people from steppes and give rise to a specifically Varna system. Now take a look on their language that is Pashto. It's a part of an Eastern Iranian language and broadly it's classified as a group of Indo-European language family that has been now with the different dialects and different branches spoken all across Northwest Pakistan, South and Eastern Afghanistan and also in the some pockets of Eastern Iran near the Afghan border. So correlating their findings with the Y paternal haplogroup, let's conclude our conversation or our talk. By comparing with some of other samples other than the research articles, there is 49 Pashtu samples shared by Afghan DNA forum on Twitter or X. Again, showed the same predominance of haplogroup R. Usually R1A is more predominant with the 51% and then rest of the haplogroup, if you see, that's L1, subclade of L1C. There is also a 6% presence of haplogroup H, that is Paleolithic, South Asian or Indian haplogroup and also the presence of haplogroup Q, that's 19% coming up from the Siberian, Central Asian and other East Asian sources. Now again, we have some individual samples that shows a few, but not a enough number, but a small samples like 12 Gilzai samples showed a pattern of R1A and R2 as a predominant and with a small presence of H1, that's again Paleolithic South Asian haplogroup, then there is a sharing of individual samples from Pashtun Lodi tribes with 14 samples and again here there is some picture of predominance of Q is more high and then again R1A and R1B with the substantial number and finally is a present presence of L1A2. So if we correlate quickly these paternal haplogroups and their origin, we all know that our haplogroup is an Indo-Aryan haplogroup that was evolved and formed somewhere in the Eurasian steppes 27,000 years back. And it has been introduced in the region of Iran, Afghanistan and parts of the South Asia with the migration of the steppes population. L haplogroup is much older and it has been considered as one of the haplogroup that seems to be a progenitor for the populations that form BMAC bacteria 
Sabria Magana archaeological complex and also its subclades has been involved in the formation of Indus Valley civilization. And presently, you see the distribution of this haplogroup among different tribes resided or located across the Pakistan and Afghanistan and also partly in the Central Asian countries. Then haplogroup Q seems to be a very old haplogroup, have a roots from a Eurasian steppes mainly from the eastern Eurasian steppes and the Siberian region. Then haplogroup J2 is a Mesopotamian haplogroup or the Middle Eastern haplogroup that seems to be evolved long before and separated with its subclade J1 that is mainly present among the Semitic people and J2 is more commonly present among the Iranian populations and also present among the Indus Valley long before the migration of a people from steppes. So from all these findings we can calculate conclude that the Pashtuns are really a admix of uh, different populations and civilizations that existed and evolved in the region of their geographical distribution that's a part of northwest Pakistan and modern Afghanistan.